What's going on guys? Thanks for watching. I'm Chris, this is 4K Motoring, and today we're gonna to talk about every mod that I've done to my 2018 Nissan Titan XT. So I bought this truck new in 2018, so I've had it for about four years now. Overall, I have loved this truck. It's been exactly what I wanted. There's been a couple modifications I've done to it to keep it reliable as a daily driver and still fairly OEM, but still give it a little bit of added utility and work a little bit better for me. First thing I did was at the dealership when I had it purchased, I had a remote start system installed. This was not the factory remote start system. This used the factory key fob, obviously pressing the lock button three times like many aftermarket systems. Went through a couple iterations of it, but finally found one that seemed to work out pretty well. In talking about the keys, one of the other things I wanted to mention was that I did engrave the keys as well, Pro 4X, just so I know which Nissan keys these came with. Obviously, in a money-saving effort, all the Nissan keys look the same, so it was nice to know which keys these were. So what I imagine you guys heard on startup was my Nismo catback exhaust system. I was able to get a pretty good deal on this exhaust, so I had it installed, and so far I love the sound of it. It's just deep enough to be aggressive, it doesn't drone, it's pretty awesome. This is just the K&N intake for the Nissan Titan XD. And in the time I've had it so far, I've really enjoyed it. It makes a nice throaty sound. Personally, I don't really think these cold air intakes really make any real difference in driving the vehicle, in power, anything like that, especially on such a short intake like this. But it does make a cool noise. And that makes me feel good. Likewise, the Nismo exhaust really works well with the intake, and I think them together make a really cool noise. Again, I'm not sure either of these systems added any real power to the truck. They did make it sound a lot cooler. Really, that's about it. They'll just extract money from your wallet. I don't think they're giving you anything back or taking anything away in fuel mileage, except for the fuel mileage decrease when you're stomping the throttle because you like the way it sounds. One of the most subtle things, but one of the things I think makes the biggest difference on this truck is these graphic inlays for the front and the back of this truck. These are both by Graphic 615. He is a Nissan Titan owner, part of the Nissan Titan forums, has a vinyl company and makes these things for the Titans. I'll go ahead and drop a link to his store down in the description. Makes really awesome stuff at a very great price for these trucks, would highly recommend. One of the other big exterior mods I've done to this truck is the LED lighting. Now, Rough Country makes a pretty cool 20 inch kit right for the front of the truck. Fits that gap pretty well and really adds a lot of forward kind of road facing light. Likewise, they also have the 50 inch light bar up there. You can see mine has a couple burnout LEDs from some moisture. I do have a replacement that was sent to me that I haven't installed yet. Rough Country does have a pretty good warranty with them, but this particular model has a DRL feature, so when the truck is running, it has small lights. And then when the lights are turned on, it's pretty exceptional light output, both from the top and down here in front. I was able to mount the switch in a pretty discreet location right here inside the cab. Now both the front and rear lights are hooked to this one circuit, both to their independent relays. So one switch just gives me a wall light in front of this truck. It is awesome at night. While not a huge mod, I wanted to mention the WeatherTech four liners that I ordered sitting in the dealership buying this truck. As you can see front and rear, you can see how well they fit. They really are made pretty well to the truck with very little issue. And as a whole, I've been very happy with them. Moving to the exterior of the truck in the rear, we have our sports bar. This is made by Nissan and available, I believe 2020 is when this became available. A lot of people are taking them off their factory trucks because you can't mount a cap to your truck. Any sort of tonneau cover will not work with this particular bar. 
There are some bars that will. Go Rhino, I think, has one. But as far as this goes, it lets you mount lights up above it, especially on the XD Titan with a longer bed. I think it fits pretty well. Was pretty easy to install, has all the wiring harness, comes pre-plumbed with the cargo lights, LED, and brake lights hooked into it. So awesome little feature there. If you guys remember one of my last videos on the Titan, you'll remember the backup camera mod I did. Now, this was a pretty easy to install mod. It was not super expensive. What I'll tell you in now the couple months I've used it is that the low light performance of this camera is far improved from what the OEM camera was. The camera itself is still not that high quality though. It's not a 1080p image like I would expect in the year 2022. So that's kind of disappointing. But as far as the details goes, it is significantly better than the factory camera and I'm not sure of any other aftermarket options that beat it. So if you're having trouble with your backup camera, if it's not the quality you want, and especially if at night you're having trouble seeing, this may be a worthy investment for you. I'll go ahead and post a link to that video up here just so you guys can catch up on it. Well guys, speaking of cameras, you guys might remember this Uvorlax rear view mirror and dash cam. This has been a pretty cool system since I've had it installed. I have been pretty happy with it overall. A couple little issues I have with it. I did not install the matte protector over the screen that decreases reflection. So during the day in very bright lights, I'll get kind of a double image. I'll get the actual mirror function of the mirror working. So things behind me are actually reflected in the glass itself. And then I'll also have the image being displayed on top and they don't really overlap well. So I wish I would have put that on there and not thrown that away. Secondly, there seems to be no automatic brightness adjustment. So to have it bright enough to see during the day kind of is a little harsh at night and it doesn't seem to be adjusting itself. I don't know if this is a setting I've missed, but it's a pretty easy thing to adjust yourself. It's still something you have to do. But with that, you get this camera right up on the top of the rear window. So I really like that camera. I really like the view it shows. I like being able to see everything around. You can see the rails of the sports bar. So it's a pretty wide angle camera. With cargo in the bed, it's easy to keep an eye on it just to make sure nothing's blowing out or shifting on you. Guys, at this point, if I've not expressed it enough, if you're driving really any major city at this day and age, you need a dash cam. If you're not running a dash cam, you're putting yourself at huge risk and people will take advantage of you. I guarantee it. If it hasn't happened yet, it will. A front and rear dash cam is even better. Something that has parking mode is even better. I mean, there's lots of options out there. They're not that expensive. I would highly recommend looking into something. This one's been a pretty good one for me overall. I'm pretty happy with it. So the final two mods I'll go over with you, both are electronic items. So the first one I'm going to mention is the Pedal Commander. Obviously I've done another video on that already. I'll go ahead and link that video up above. This device is kind of cool. It does allow you to have drive modes on a truck that otherwise doesn't have them. It allows you to play with the throttle a little bit on how it responds, how much dead zone there is, depending on your traction. If you're in a high traction area, low traction area, towing, hauling, stuff like that lets you kind of modulate that pedal feel so it's very comfortable for you and consistent for you. That said, I don't use it very often. The majority of the time when I drive the vehicle, I have that system off. Or if I do have it on, it's on city minus three. So barely in any mode to function. And I think that's fine. And some of the higher modes, I think it lurches and it really gets out of hand real quick. So I'm not a big fan of all the things it does. The eco mode has never seemed to save me any fuel and it really makes you bury the throttle just to get moving. So for that end, it kind of seemed like more of a safety hazard than anything else to me at least. So I just run with it off most of the time or if I'm towing something, I might put it on, you know, a very low boost just to give me a little extra and that's generally all I need. The final mod I'm gonna discuss that's been at least done at this point to the truck is the phone mount. Now I have a couple of these different kinds. This is not necessarily my favorite kind overall, but this is the one I've had the longest and it's worked this long. It's a wireless charging phone mount 
that allows me to stick my phone in it. It clamps down, really any size phone. It's one of the vent mount clips, so it does take away one of your vents, really the airflow from it. It's nice to have your phone charging and also in a prominently displayed place when you don't have Android Auto or any of the other decent mapping systems. This does have navigation from Nissan. It's terrible. This whole head unit's coming out very soon. But it's nice to be able to have that mapping ability right in front of your face, right in a very easy to view area. I'm very happy with that. And that's something that I probably use the most and would most recommend some sort of phone mount for that. I will mention the stubby antenna as well. This is a very minor mod replacing the large factory antenna. I think it looks better, a little bit more modern. It still gets some reception. I don't use FM or AM anyway, so XM or Bluetooth is basically all I do. So it really hasn't changed my life with the truck. I couldn't tell you how much it really decreases your actual transmission or reception level. One thing I'll say is that your factory antenna acts as kind of a height indicator. So you don't scrape your roof on anything. Your antenna will hit before your roof does. So you are getting rid of that feature with this antenna, but it does look just a little bit cleaner in my opinion. Well guys, those are pretty much all of the mods I've done on this truck thus far. If you wanna see more and like the Nissan content, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe. This truck is gonna be continuously evolving, but I wanna keep it pretty useful. So stay tuned and see what happens next. Thanks for watching guys. I'm Chris, you've been watching 4K Motoring and we'll catch you next time.